Hey everyone, today we got at least a few inches of rain. Yesterday we got at least a few inches of rain. The day before that we got at least a few inches of rain. The day before that it was dry for a couple days and it was wet the whole month before that basically every day. Today I'm realizing the water table is basically up to the ground. It hasn't rained in a few hours but yet these puddles aren't going away. In fact, these puddles seem to be getting worse even though the rain has stopped. The whole garden is flooded and it, this water is slowly going up getting trapped in all my trenches. I realize that it's all over here. It's just trickling out of the woods and it's up. I'm now realizing that the water table is about three feet above the basement floor. The discharge coming out of the basement gravity line is now over eight gallons a minute. I've seen this before in the past, I believe. The sump pumps back in those days had to turn on every minute or every other minute to handle this. The water table is very high right now. And if we take a walk into the woods, there's even more evidence of it. But in my yard, basically everywhere is squishy and it's just not sinking into the ground because I think the water table is this high. You see, this trail here used to go straight through here. Every time I mow, I just nudge it a little more and more. And I think I'm going to maybe nudge it through there where that log pile is to the higher ground. Because for the past week, we've had water here. This puddle is not going away. In fact, it's slowly getting bigger as we get more and more rain. Very squishy ground. Absolutely waterlogged. It would be catastrophic for this entire region if we were to get a windstorm. So many trees would come down and uproot because the ground is just mud everywhere. Now we come over here. The grass is growing and very nice around the fire pit. I threw grass seed throughout the entire woods. I guess the turkeys ate it everywhere, except it rooted very well there. This trail I have is a little neglected. It needs maybe a trimming. It's growing in. This is the first year in a while the trails are actually growing in, which is a good thing. I have to do some trimming. The trees are growing a lot this year. There's seedlings everywhere this year. Is the first year in two years I've seen the trees produce pine cones, and there's so many. There's baby maple trees coming up everywhere. I transplanted some bulbs for a fern, but apparently it didn't come up for some reason. But new trees will grow in that stump. Not as high as a few days ago, but tonight we might get five inches of rain, the weather's saying. They're saying possibly catastrophic flooding in the next day. That's why I got this trail camera right here which is making a video clip every 30 minutes. I'm hoping this area, if it does flood, would be on camera. Usually this water does not trickle here except it's spring thaw. Grass is growing in good here. With the rainy weather, it's also bringing in so many slugs. I'm gonna have to put more slug poison down around the gardens because we're, with the woods around the entire property, there's an army of slugs that's ever moving in, so I'm going through that stuff pretty fast. Today on the side of the road, somebody must have left their dog out, and speaking of that, this was a bear poop absolutely covered in slugs like a week ago. Today, someone must have let their dog out of the car not too far near my house, and there was dozens of slugs on one poop just going nuts eating it. And here we got a, can you see the spider web? I don't know if you can see it with the sun angle, but there's a good spider there. I just took a trail camera here from this cleared area, and I made a very short video of it, but there was a lot of deer, a bunch of turkeys, nothing really exciting. I saw the ear of a moose, but didn't include that in the video because it just got its ear. It's like ducking next to it. Got some blueberry bushes. Open areas always turn into berry bushes. And there's going to be berries and blueberries all over in here very soon. And look how much growth the pine trees actually got. I'm going to show you a couple pine trees actually bud again. They actually double grew this year. I want to go show you those ones. First time in a few years, the moss is actually green. The moss is quickly spreading even onto my firewood piles with all this humidity. Very oppressive lately. Very rainy. The moss is spreading up onto everything dead, helping break it down very fast. It's very exciting. 
all this debris. If we keep having rain like this, it looks like we might be in a rainy pattern now, they said for a couple of years, which is awesome. It'll break down all of this garbage in the woods and make it be so much healthier. The rain is helping all the organisms grow, take over, break everything down, clear the forest out. This area of the woods, you can tell like a turkey's been digging these holes looking for bugs. There's a pool of water in here. There's lots of pools of water. The moss is so beautifully green here. It's growing up on top of all these uprooted trees, making the tree softer, breaking it down into soil. Take a look at all this growth really taking off. Trails are growing in fast. Look at that. Little baby trees all over the rotten ones are starting to take off. Every tree that looked sick in the spring is looking like it's growing very well now. I don't see any death this year. Last year, a lot of our trees turned brown. Those ones are dead, but everything else is doing awesome. It's like a carpet in here. This moss looks just like a carpet all over the place in this area of the yard. Whole forest floor is just covered in it. And it goes on for quite a distance. And I just got a little fly in my eye. I don't know if I can get it out. Beautiful carpet of moss slowly spreading up onto this tree. I just fell down a couple years ago. It can finally start rotting. These piles of debris I threw to the sides of the trail, the moss will start climbing up into them. See, the whole forest is just covered in moss here. Extremely pretty. I haven't seen it this green in years. Years ago, I put this chair out here hoping for this rain. Look, we got moss forming on it. If it stays rainy this year, this whole thing will probably be bright green. So I'm really not worried about my flooded vegetable garden or anything. Two more days of rain, then it looks dry for quite a while. Everything will get to dry out a bit. This tree is one of the ones that seems to be, yeah, if we look up here, see it's starting to double grow. It's growing new shoots again. Not the best example, but one I just found. These trees are weird. When the sun hits them, they wilt, but then they perk right back up. The ferns here are doing awesome. In the spring, they looked horrible because we got a late frost. They bounced back fast. This area is sometimes flooded right when it rains, but it sunk back into the ground. I have another time-lapse camera because if we do get a lot, this might flood. Yesterday, that bridge was underwater. One time during the spring thaw, the ground was still frozen, but mixed with rain. It all came here. The, this bridge was even underwater. It took the camera last time, but we found it because it's most likely just going to get stuck right next to here. Everything's very green this year. I'm so happy. Haven't seen that in a while. I wonder if there's any water collecting underneath these uprooted trees. It's like little ponds now for the frogs. Yep, yeah, look at this. It's like a little pond, also a mosquito hatchery. I see lots of mosquitoes in there. I don't want them to come over to me, but there's also a lot of spider webs in there, so they'll eat most of it. And there's that tree we went camping in back in the winter, that uprooted one over there. It's been raining so much lately that I was wondering when I was gonna be able to mow the lawn. The slugs like all the grass clippings. There's way too many of those slugs. You see how it's a little brown? This is called uh, scalping the lawn. It'll bounce back in a few days. It's because I've been waiting and waiting because it's always wet. I finally mowed it wet yesterday, and I even sharpened the blade before I did it. We did pretty well, see? Some spots where the lawnmower wheels were, it pushed it over and it didn't stand back up to hit the blade, but good enough. I'm not picky. See? Everywhere. If we look at the ground, we could pick out thousands and thousands of slugs. They're everywhere. On days like this, don't walk around the yard barefoot. Look at them. Absolutely everywhere. Look at them. Everywhere. 
I'm not even pointing them all out. Everywhere, if you look at the ground, no matter where it is, looks like this. So my slugs basically killed everything that I threw in the experimental garden. I threw hundreds of seeds here. They started growing. Absolutely all the lettuce the slugs killed. Surprised they haven't killed the cucumbers yet since they killed some in the main garden. This is my mint plant. See, it's doing good. It's sending out runners. That stuff becomes invasive once it takes over. But I like that stuff. Look at this stupid slug. He's eating my mint. They completely defoliated. Look at these slugs. Defoliated this mint plant. That's why these ones look so bad by the woods. Just defoliating it like crazy. At least they seem to not like potatoes. That's my main crop over here. The rest of this, I just didn't want to waste the seeds and they got to eat it. So this is my big frog pond and the water's coming in here at a very good clip. Usually it's pouring down like three inches. It's up to the pipe because it's slightly over capacity and it's going out the drain at the other end of the pond and then flooding all those woods. Look at all the tadpoles in here. So this is coming right out of the basement. I did that last year for peace of mind and this is great filtration now for the frogs. This thing, even if it stopped raining, it would take weeks for this thing to completely come to a halt. The water level is now feet above the basement floor. So as it comes in through the foundation, it gets collected by a perimeter drain to the sump pump pit. The sump pumps will not start up unless this somehow gets clogged or collapses, backing it up to the building, where there's two pumps and an emergency battery backup pump that would all kick in instead of this. I'll go show that to you right now where this water is coming in from. This is the actual drain for the sump pumps right here. And this is the drain for the washing machine because laundry detergent's one of the worst things you can put into a septic. This one's huge. And it's a cricket. By the end of summer, those crickets will be huge. The frogs are gonna love those. We got crickets everywhere. They'll, they'll, we have these giant ones that are almost two inches long, these big crickets. In the fall, when I mow the lawn, there'll be thousands of them jumping around everywhere. And that's when the birds come and pick them off right after I'm done mowing. Look at that, that's a sign there that I got from one of the logging companies. They've been putting those up everywhere because they're tired of what all this mud, especially lately. Idiots getting stuck. So this is where the water comes in, right in here. Gotta open that up. So this is where the water is in here. This is all the water going down to the frog pond. See, there's a pretty good trickle Earlier, it was going in there a bit more. You can see the typical amount that goes through where the orange stain is, it's above that. So this pipe here is where the water would come in from the perimeter drain, but I guess it's not up to that because nothing ever dribbles down my foundation, thankfully. It all just comes into the pit here through those holes underneath the floor. And if the water ever gets clogged and can't go in that pipe, it turns on this pump, or the battery backup pump right there. Every now and then I'll come in here and give them each a test. Just manually override it like this, watch. See that? Now it's a couple inches below the pipe, so now the frogs won't have water for a little bit. No, look how fast it's already filling in. The water's coming into the pit so fast, look, it's all the way back up to the pipe already. Wow, there's so much water coming in here. We can test the other one too. Just want to make sure those work and don't get seized. You know, every now and then, wow, well, that one brought it down like four inches. Look at the water permeating back in there. At least the water's clean. That means it's not eroding anything under the foundation. I'd be worried if that was the case. But under the foundations, there's a lot of gravel. Where this pipe was put in with the excavator, it's a little bit hollow here because they couldn't backfill it perfectly, but good and during the dry times this is how we fill that frog pond and purify it we just stick this washing machine hose into there turn the water on and that produces about eight gallons a minute because it doesn't have to go through the filter or anything that slows it down unfiltered water right from the ground yep i absolutely do not miss the sound of the sump pump turning on every couple of minutes here's the water that just came out of the sump pump where that little grate is i guess the water is a little discolored but so is the water that comes out of the, what the, 
That water smells nasty and stinky. Or maybe I touched something. That might be it. I might have touched something somewhere. Let's see. My other hand smells clean. Yeah, it is the water. It smells kind of gross and rotten. I, maybe something in the sump pump pit is dead. I don't know. It smells gross. The household water doesn't smell like that, so I know it's not the groundwater. But the groundwater sometimes does appear a little orangey because we have iron oxidizing bacteria. That's only when it rains. It clears up within a day or so. It's not even really yellow now. That's usually during the spring thaw. It gets into the wells and stuff, but it's not dangerous. Everyone drinks iron bacteria sometimes. Completely harmless. That orange stuff I'm always showing you on culverts and stuff. It's good to see the trees are slowly filling back in. Some of these trees might not die. I know a lot of them are being attacked by carpenter ants too. I bought a lot of chemicals last year that I was going to put on the precious trees I cared about. And... I'm so glad that it's raining because they look healthier. I do not want to use pesticides, especially with the high water table and stuff. I thought I was going to have to cut this tree down this year. It looks so bad in the spring, but it's slowly starting to fill in. It still looks horrible, but hopefully it'll recover. It's a nice double tree. If it does die, the berry bushes are ready to take over. And look at all the seedlings. They're all ready to take over. And we have another slug poop feeding frenzy. Thanks for watching, everybody, and have a great night.